How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another commentated video. Today we're going to be talking about how a massive number in the video game Super Mario 64 helped popularize a community both through its sports context ridiculous size as well as, th as well as through the intricacy and precision of the carefully plotted route it was used in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a video about 1 million 331,952, and how it impacted a community, and with it my free time and hobbies for years. Super Mario 64 is a three dimensional platforming and exploration game that was released in 1996 by Nintendo. The exploration part can easily be done in a variety of ways, but the platforming oftentimes expects the player to use the A button, because the A button is what makes Mario jump. Single jumps, double jumps, side flips, back flips, long jumps, and wall kicks all rely on the A button. And so, the classic question in Super Mario 64 has been how often do you need to use the A button to complete the platforming sections in Super Mario 64 and to collect the stars at the end? A question to which the answers are sought after by the A button help. Now, before we get to my mega favorite number, first want to go over some honorable mentions, because there are a lot of interesting large numbers in the A button count. The number of possible RNG behaviors in the clock over the course of 1000 frames if Mario doesn't make dust. This number is estimated at around 10 to the 130, and its possible application is to decide whether or not a setup called random Pedro spot is thought to be theoretically possible or not. The number of states that you would have to test in random order until you would be expected to find one that actually works for the setup. This one is estimated at around 10 to the 80. However, it vastly depends on several aspects of the desired setup that are still unclear. The number of states that you would have to test in order to find one where one of the moving clocks stands still for 1200 frames. This number doesn't have a relevance anymore, but it started off the idea with the random clock petro spot. Man, there's so much to talk about with the random clock petro spot blueprint. Maybe I'll make another video about that at some point later down the road. The number of floating point errors until some platforms in the stage Bowser and Fire C are high enough to get past the pole in the center without pressing A. The number of frames that that takes. The amount of speed that is required for passing the pole on N64 using a glitch called Bully Battery. All those beautiful numbers pale in comparison to how my mega favorite number has not just been a neat observation and a beautiful landmark, but how it has actually affected my life and the three times of several people in the SM64A account community. My mega favorite number has to do with the collection of watch for rolling rocks in 0.5 egg presses. <clears throat> that means while holding out an egg press for a previous star and without incurring any new egg presses on top. To explain why this is exceptional, let's look at what you normally have to do to collect the watch for rolling rock star. Normally, you're expected to walk up to the path where the rock spawn. And then you're supposed to perform a jump or side flip into a wall kick in order to get up to the star platform. And since this platform is actually the highest point in the entire level, it's really hard to see how you could ever get high speed, how you could ever get high enough without at least one massive speed scaling double jump, like you can do for a stump on a swamp and hit the clock, and like we also used to do for a watch for our own rock as well. And the answer to the question involves the use of a, of a quirk that we call Parallel Universes, or PU for short. You see, Mario's position is compared with the position of wall, floor, and ceiling hitboxes. And while the wall check accurate, accurately takes the float value of Mario's position, floor and ceiling checks actually convert Mario's position into a 16-bit integer, and that integer has the potential to overflow. This means that while Mario cannot leave his position into areas where all floor checks return negative, which we call out of bounds, Mario actually can move into an area 
that is about 65,536 units away from the main map, due to these overflowing position variables return a floor triangle on the main map. So now we're at 65,536. How do we get there from how do we get from there to the number of up one million? Well, first step is to understand that Mario doesn't just move once every frame. He actually moves four times on each frame, with a wall, floor, and ceiling check at the end of each of those movements. And in order to have Mario move a distance equivalent to the speed on each frame, each of these quarter steps in Mario's movement only move Mario by a quarter of his intended move distance. So now, in order to move around 62,500 units, he can move a bit less than 2 to the 16, as that just means his floor check will find him on a different floor triangle when we start out. But in order to move 62,500 units, Mario actually has, has to have about 250,000 speed, yeah, 250,000 intended movement per frame. Okay, so now we're at 250,000 speed, right? Well, kind of. There actually is another, another mechanic in Super Mario 64 that makes it so that our speed and our intended movement on each frame are not always the same. You see, if Mario moves up or down a slope, it looks like he is moving at the same speed as normal, <coughs> just that some portion of his movement is upward or downward. This is actually an illusion. Mario's quarter step never displays Mario up or down while he's on the ground, and he is only snapped back onto the floor or the floor deck after the quarter step. So in order to generate this effect of Mario not suddenly becoming the Flash when moving up the hill, similar to how you can see Steve running up staircases super quickly in Minecraft, the game actually multiplies Mario's speed with the Y component of the current floor triangle to normal deck. Boom. Maths. Linear algebra. It's scary. But I hope you're buckling up, because you've decided to watch a math-related video series in the first place. Let's look at this a little more closely. The height dimension in Super Mario 64 is called Y, just like in Minecraft, just like probably in a bunch of other three-dimensional games that were made by developers who had experience with 2D games, and Y being the name of the height dimension there. A normal vector is just a length one vector in space that is perpendicular to the surface you're looking at. So it's basically the opposite of the facing properties of that surface. A perfectly flat floor has a normal vector with a y component of 1 and lateral component of 0, and a perfectly vertical wall has a normal vector with a y, with a y component of 0. In this case, we are building up hybrid speed on a pretty steep slope. And this in turn means that the normal vector of that slope is pretty low. In fact, this particular slope only has a normal vector of about 0.523. Still more than a half, so it doesn't really sound like that much, but actually, a normal y of 0.523 means that we're talking about a slope of about 163%. If you ever come across a road sign that says 163% slope, I recommend not following that road. <coughs> so to get about 250,000 units of intended movement per frame while on a triangle with a normal vector y component of about 0.523, we actually need not 65,000, not 150,000, but in this case, <coughs> 479,006 units of speed. <coughs> What's going on with the number in the title? How do we get from 479,006 over 1.3 million? Well, the number that I chose for my mega favorite number is the time that it takes to reach the speed from zero in frames. <coughs> on this particular slope where we're building hyperspeed, a glitch called hyperspeed walking grants Mario about 0.357 backward speed every frame. And that's why the original task of Watch for Own Rocks in 0.58 presses involves building up speed for 1,331,952 frames, which is about 44,398 seconds, which is about 740 minutes, which is about 12 hours.
So this mega favorite number tells a story about how Mario builds up speed for 12 and 3rd hours in order to travel to a position that gets treated like valid ground due to an integer overflow error. But the story doesn't end here. I have yet to explain to you why this number's story has been so important to the history of the A button challenge community. On January 12, 2016, a guy named Code 2012 uploaded a video where he commentated his task was a super play of watch for rolling rocks in only 0.5 A purpose. That video blew up. Millions of people saw and watched the video, thousands commentated, probably hundreds created memes out of the various explanations parent quote made. One of the major points of attention and one of the major sources for those memes was the building up speed for over 12 hours. A, real, a ridiculous amount of time for SM64 task standards, as most of the stars in Super Mario 64 are typically obtained in about 20 seconds, and even the longest segments rarely ever take longer than 30 minutes. Here, in the A button challenge, a lot of intuitive movement options are either unavailable or undesired, and the building up speed for this enor enormous amount of time was essential to pull off this very specific saving rod. As this video became popular, so did Parancode 2012's YouTube channel with other videos, the A button challenge, and ultimately the A button challenge community. A community that I'm glad to have stumbled on just over three years ago, and that I have been a part of and working on things like finding an APR safe on Thump and Thump, as well as an improvement of the time taken for this very star from over 12 hours down to a mere 5 hours and 26 minutes. I actually do think that this A button challenge in Super Mario 64, a game that I had barely even heard of before looking into speedruns of popular games that weren't from the real time strategy or city building genres, helped me a lot in realizing that a constant in my entire life so far has been my passion in dealing with numbers dynamic behaviors, and mathematician-like problem solving. Wanting to look into ways to find one of the many conjectured solutions for an NP-hard problem that the ABC crew had, had dug up was probably one of the deciding factors that led me into studying mathematics. Studying mathematics has probably been one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. Currently, ABC community is working on a 70 star A button challenge folding pass, that is, a sequence of inputs that can be played back on an N64 console using a Tesla, collect 70 of the 120 stars, and defeats the final boss Bowser in the sky, all while using the A button either, either only for one singular frame in Bowser and 5C, or not at all. If you are interested to learn more about the 70 ABC project, I recommend checking out Kyrio O4's mega favorite number video where he explains the A button challenge from his point of view and gives some more insight on how this project is coming along. So that's the story of my mega favorite number, 1,331,952. <coughs> or the number of frames built up speed for in Hazy Maze Cave in order to reach what we call a parallel universe. If I've managed to spark your interest in Super Mario 64's A button challenge, there's a few other videos that I can recommend to you. First up, I recommend Kiro O4's mega favorite number video, where he talks about the routing behind the 70 ABC project, and how Stump on Thwomp in 6 and Watch for Rolling Rocks in 0.5 A versus commentated. If you're looking for something more speedy, I suggest you check out Bowser in the Dark World with red coins in 1 minute and 3 seconds, to the top of the fortress in 100 coins in 1 minute and 41 seconds, and hot food it into the volcano in only 23 seconds. If you are interested in Super Mario 64 tasks in general, I can recommend Bosch's new task of on Battlefield 100 coins paired with the foot race with Cooper the Quick. Leave the links to those videos and the updated playlists of single stars for the 120 star ABC challenge and the 70 star ABC project in the description. 
If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to thank you for your time and patience. This was my first serious commentated video, although I have some silly and meme although I have made some silly and meme commentated videos in the past. I may or may not take and make another serious commentated video in the future. If you do want to see me make one, feel free to tell me in the description. Other than that, I upload tool assisted as well as real-time completions of challenges and difficult levels in Super Mario 64, as well as speedruns of some other games like Anno 4.4. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks again for watching, and goodbye.